Hello everybody, my name is Win. you're watching Win Playing Games, and this game is Europa Universalis 4. So, what is this game about? Well, as you can see, we are currently looking at, um, I'd say a medieval or colonization age Europe. If we click on this button, we can take a look at all the different countries we can play as, each country is separated into a different colour. For instance, we have the Noble Red of England, we have the Royal Blue of France, we have the um, Bold Purple of Byzantium, and we have the Invading Red of the Timurids. So, what is this game about? Basically, you go in and pick a country, then you play as this country, you try and make sure your country survives. If your country gets completely annexed, it's game over. Now, how does the game start? Well, if you look over here to the left, you can see there are actually lots of different windows here, or boxes. Clicking each one of these puts you at a different date. For instance, we click the third, the Thirty Year War, and the date that we start on from this bookmark, as they're called, will be the 23rd of May, 1618. Now, as you can see, the map looks radically different to what it just did. These are historical bookmarks. So, these bookmarks are historically accurate renditions of the borders of countries during this time in actual history. Now, the only true historical thing about this game are the historical starts. As soon as you start playing, it automatically becomes a different, an alternate reality or an alternate history, should I say, um, simulation. Now, as for the country who I am going to play in this series, I have actually decided who I want to play as. Now, we could play as a Western um, tech group, we could play as an Eastern tech group, we could play as the Ottomans, we could play Norway, Sweden, we could go into the Americas and play as the um, the Native Americans, like the Creek, the Pueblo, the Aztec, the Zapotec, Maya, Inca. Additionally, we can also go play as any of the tribes in Africa. We could go and play as anyone in... Um, in... what is this place called? This place is called India. We could go to the Indonesia and play anyone there. We can go to China and play anyone here. So, out of all these countries, who am I going to play? It's definitely not going to be me, but that is close. It's not Castile, not Savoy, not Aragon, or Hesse. I'll just tell you. The country I want to be playing as is... Tibet. Now, Tibet starts off in the Chinese tech group, and they have the religion Buddhist. They start off with a 2-2-2 two, two, two leader, and they have a 2-2-2 two, two, two air, apparently. So, let's jump right into the game. Okay, so, as we start off in Tibet, we notice a few things right off the bat. We have a few minor provinces down here to our south that we can easily go in and annex. We have big threats of neighbours in the Oirat Horde and Ming. Now, I really don't want to get on either of these guys' bad side, so improving relations with these guys would be beneficial. Unfortunately for me, the Orit Horde has started off in a rivalry with us. This means they are unlikely to join an alliance and are more likely to attack me. So, if I improve relations with Ming, hopefully they'll like me enough. Let's check Shan. Shan again is another bordering county or country. Unfortunately, they have also rivaled us. Now, rivalries are a bad thing. Rival countries are more likely to attack you because they get benefits when it comes to demanding stuff from you. We can set rival our own rival, so if we go to war with that specific rival, then we get benefits by demanding things of them, by winning battles and winning war from them. 
So let's take a look who hates me. Right off the bat, the Aurit Horde hate me. We have Sean who hates me. We have Bengal who hates me. We have Assam who also hates me. And Koch. Now Assam and Koch aren't really that much of a bother to me. I expect either Assam or Bengal to go in and try and annex Koch first. So what we need to do is we need to go and send some guy to fabricate a claim on the county of Koch. What this will do is it will give us this thing called a Corsus Belli against Koch. Corsus Belli are reasons to attack somebody. And if we fabricate a claim on the province, that means we forge a, a document that says, hey, this used to be Tibet land, give it back. So let's go and unpause. Let's wait for the claim to be fabricated. And let's also take a look at other things. We have a free advisor slot. Now, this means that we can hire somebody to fulfill the admin role, the diplomatic role, and the military role. Advisors cost money. You have to pay to add them into your um, your council. And you also have to pay a monthly fee to maintain them. Now, we are making 2.7 ducats a month. That should be enough, I guess, to hire a couple of people. So each, um, each advisor has a certain effect associated with them. For instance, the army organizers, organizer, this guy here, improves land force limits by 10%. This means we can hire a stronger army without any penalties. Our army force limit is 5 out of 7. If that goes over that amount, then we have to start paying more money. So, who else should we get? Well, we have Spy Offense Guy, Global Trade Power Guy, and Better Relations Over Time Guy. Now, I don't think either of those will, are worthwhile. Although, you know, I'd prefer the go Global Trade Power over everything else. So, let's just wait for that. Now, we are only making 0.7 ducats a month. That is fairly bad. So, what we're going to have to do is we're just going to have to leave our last advisor slot blank. So let's go and take a look at who runs our government. Right now we are... Tibet is being ruled by Prince Trapka Ching, who is 49 years old, and he has skill of 2, 2 and 2. He has two two twos. We are a noble republic. Noble republic or your government give you special abilities along with being that government. For instance, Noble Republic gives me morale of armies plus 10%. It gives me tolerance of heretics and tolerance of heathens. So, that means, along with our abilities, we are very tolerant of um, heretics and heathens. This means, revolt risk in proposit with religions deemed her heretical or heathenistic, by my, by um, Buddhism, have less chance to rise up and revolt because we're tolerant towards them. So we start off getting a royal marriage with Kachar. Kachar, I really don't want Kachar as a guy, as an ally. So I'll just wait for that end. Can I get a royal marriage with Oyat Horde? I cannot. Who is Oyat Horde? Um, rivaled. Manchu and Chagatai. What about Ming? Ming has rivaled Ryuku, Dai Viet, and Chagatai. So, if I go and click rival Chagatai, we'll get an uh, opinion bonus from Oratod and Ming, because we have rivaled their rival. Now, this opinion modifier is applied over time. So, we need to keep Chagatai as a rival for quite some time to come. Now I do not think Chagatai can actually declare war on me because we don't border any provinces that they own. So in order to get to us, we need they need to go through the Oyot Horde. So we have a free mission to choose. We can click improve our prestige. Prestige is this icon here. And to fulfill this mission 
we need a prestige of at least 50. We can get the rival of a threat. Japan is the rival of a country considered a threat to us, so they should be our friend. So, let's take a look at Japan. Japan are fairly weak. I kind of don't expect Japan to be of much assistance. Although they have so many vessels... Excuse me. Although they have so many vessels, they have very limited amount of ships to ferry them onto the Chinese mainland. So let's take a look. Korea, Manchu and Ryukyu are the target of Japan's ire. So Korea, Manchu and Ryukyu. Or Ry Ryukyu. I am very bad at rolling my R's, so I tend not to do them. Okay, what else can we do? Protect our brothers, our brethren in Yunnan. So let's go and check you. What is it? Yunnan. That is. Where is it? Yun oh, there it is, right in front of me. Doi. Unfortunately, that is owned by Ming. And Ming is somebody we really don't want to interfere with. So, what would be our next plan of action? Well, we have fabricated a claim on Koch. Koch are allied with Kachar. Kachar probably have a decent amount of men. And so would Koch. So, let's go and click this. Let's go and select Koch as our rival. And as for our last rival, let's leave that. Setting rivals is not free. You do have to pay money. Well, not money. You have to pay 10 diplomatic power, which is this up here. And we need diplomatic power for other stuff. We need... These points up here are the backbone of your country. 5, 6, 7, so let's get rid of one of them. Let's get, another one. get rid of another one of those guys. Let's hire a band of um, cavalry. So, what should our um, next step, next course of action be? Well, let's wait until we get enough men. Let's send them down to Bhutan, and then we'll probably declare war on Koch. Now, we are losing some money per month. We are losing 0.13 per month. When our money reaches zero or below zero, we automatically take out a loan. Now, loans aren't as bad as people might think. Loans just... You, you pay loans back over time due to interest. So, let's go and send this conquest CD. Will Ming go into a royal marriage with us. They will. So let's go and get a royal marriage with Ming. And then let's go... Oh man, a three shock general. Sorry, three fire general. Another thing that's important in this, in this... Another thing that is important in this game are these events that pop up. These things you'll see quite often. And they give you a choice of two things depending on what the events are. Some are good, some are bad. Unfortunately, this event is quite bad. So, we have just taken the option which shows our stability, and lowered stability means that the revolt risks are more likely to happen in preferences that we control. Also, it decreases the... Um, no, it doesn't decrease the amount of money we make, it just increases the amount of money that... Sorry, I'm getting distracted by all these pop-ups. It increases the amount of money that we have to pay when we get a loan. So it would be in our best interest to improve our stability back to zero. And we'll probably want to improve that back to one as well, whenever we can. So I'm just sitting on my enemy's products here. This value here tells you how likely you are to siege the province whenever the siege timer is done. Each timer is a screen bar here. This means if when the siege timer gets full, we have a 49% chance of occupying this place. So we have completely occupied Koch. Now we'll just go and demand 
full annexation of Koch. Now doing this again isn't free. We gain this thing called aggressive expansion. The higher your aggressive expansion, the more your neighbouring countries will dislike you. So if we go through this decision, Assam will hate us, Koch will, well Koch doesn't matter because we're fully annexing them, Nepal will dislike us, Shan, Ming, Rodhod and Bengal will also dislike us. Now we also have this thing called overextension. Because Koch is a, um, not a core province of ours, we'll have to core it, but before we get that core, it'll cause us overextension, which increases our revolt risk. Now what I've just been checking here, I go to the diplomatic map mode, click on Koch, you can see that the provinces over here are um, are crisscross, and same with my province of Bhutan. Now what I can do with this is I can vassalize Koch, which means his nation isn't destroyed. In fact, I could... I have a better idea. Wait. Oh, I can't send my guy through. Hey Bengal, can I get ac- no, I can't get access. Dang. Let's go and improve relations with Bengal. Improve relations. Let's wait for a moment. Until this thing here turns into a tick. In order for these actions to go through, you need to have at least one more positive than you do negative points. So as you see, right now we have positive 10 and negative 8. If it was negative 8 and positive 8, we would have um, 0, and that means we cannot ask for military access. But now that we have one more point than we do um, negative point, we can go and send our guys through... we can send our um, request for military access into their country. This will allow our men to go through their country and walk into Kachar. Now I am going to engage the Kacharian army in battle. I am going to detach the siege on this place and then go and siege this province. And now it's just really a waiting game. What I plan to do now is I plan to separate piece out um, Kachar and have them become my vassal while I fully annex Koch. This means that Koch will cease to exist, my name will get bigger, well Tibet will get bigger, and the and the Koch, and the Koch province will turn white, which symbolizes it is now part of my country. I, ex I have successfully conquered Koch. So once I finish seeding, um, sieging up um, Kachar, I'm going to force them to become my vassal. Actually, let's take a look at something. Kachar are Hindu. So what I can do is I can finish sieging this. As soon as these provinces are done, I can sue for peace and then force religion and then become a Tibetan vassal. Now they won't accept this because our demands are too great. If we have demands that exceed our war score with them, our individual war score with this province, with this country. Wait, of course. Wait, what? No. Wait, this is Kacha. Yes, right. Okay, so once we finish teaching this up, we can go and demand this. And now, let's go and move our guys back to our country. And once we get our diplomat back, which we have, we can go and sue this guy for peace and demand full annexation. So now we have actually um, got a few things to do. Assam has entered a military coalition against us. That is bad, but it's not too bad considering it's just Assam. Military coalitions are bad, I'll get into those a bit later. But what we are doing now is we are coring Koch, 
when you call a province, it means that province is then rightfully part of your country, and you will have lowered revolt risk, and you can then start doing things like changing the religion and changing the culture, both of which have negative effects if they're not accepted. Anyway, that'll do it for this episode. My name is Wind, you have been watching Wind Playing Games, and I will see you next time. Take care.